Well, welcome back, everyone. Um, this one will be a bit shorter, I think. Um, but we're going to be talking about conditionals and program flow control. So what what we've done so far is, is very basic. We've just dealt with um, uh, getting information into the computer um, from the keyboard or from the um, source file itself. So what happens if we want to make decisions while we're in, in the program? What, what if we want to do, if, if something is greater than something else, and do A, if, if it's not do B, how do we, how do we handle this? Um, so the primary um, flow control for decision making is the if else, um, else if um, statement which is, um, as shown here, um, if x is greater than 1, print x is greater than 1. If Since x is uh, 1.456, um, that's going to print that out. Um, or we've got the else statement, um, which is if um, x was 0.9, I would say x is less than or equal to 1. Um, when you're dealing with strings, you have to use um, you can't use the, the greater than, less than, equal to um, signs. You have to use EQ and the other ones, which I believe are all listed in the handbook that accompanies the course, um, here to see if it equals or not equals, um, etc. Um, there is one here that isn't listed that I want to go over. There we go. Um, so, Here, else if. This is a combination of an else and an if statement. So if input is greater than 5, print whatever. Else if input is greater than 2, do whatever. Else, do whatever else. Um, and then the thing I want to cover down here is the use of the logical and, um, which is if the input is greater than 0, and the input is less than 10, we know that we've got a, a single digit. So let me go ahead and run this, and we can see what happens. So we know that um, going down, um, when we hit the first one, we, we see if the input is greater than 5, and of course 4 is not greater than 5. So we skip this section of code. Um, but then we get into this section of code, which says, else, if it's greater than 2, do, do this, um, and we do do this, uh, or it is greater than 2, so we, we print that out, um, which means that we don't get to this else statement. We, because we've chosen this section of code to, to execute, we skip this section of code. Sorry. Choose a section of code, skip this section of code. Um, then, since we were in some of the digits, not that one. There we go. Um, since it was greater than zero and less than 10, we got a single digit. Um, so if we run this again, and we go negative one, um, we can find out that um, negative one is less than or equal to two. Um, not entirely true that it's not a single digit, but um, since it's at, outside of our range, that if we did this greater than negative 10, um, it's, it uh, comes up as a negative digit here. Um, so that's if statements and else statements and else if statements. Um, loops. Loops are very important. Um, somebody famous once said that um, all interesting programs have loops within them. Um, I don't know if that's entirely true, but certainly everything that I've done that's interesting has a loop in it. Um, so we're going to start with oh, wait, kind of a while. Um, for each is a um, way to step through a an, an array. So you say for each for each um, cat, we we do something for each cat. Um, then 
I'll, I'll show you different ways to use first image here. That's the wrong thing. Um, so I've got two arrays here, which are the names of my wife's cats and dogs. Um, I have here uh, a two-dimensional array that has cats and dogs within it. Um, and then I've got the for each here. So I want to go through the cats here and say, for each cat, do something. So for each um, variable in cats, go through and print cat, uh, print the, the variable plus the uh, plus a comma plus a, um, a space. Then at the end of all that, put a character turn. Um, as opposed to for each, which does each one of them in turn, there's the for statement, which is, allows you to uh, proclaim that uh, you start at um, index zero um, as long as you're within the dogs, uh, how many dogs there are. Um, you can go through and change your index. And this is what makes for a little bit more powerful than for each. I don't have to step through each dog. So if I just want to go every other dog, it will allow me to do that by saying um, index plus two. Um, then down here, um, since pets is a two-dimensional array, um, this is sort of a, a classic um, nested for loop that allows us to um, go through each one, and again, we get our, our two indexes here, as mentioned in the last um, last set of that, uh, or in, in the last video. Um, so let's go ahead and run that. So here, this is this is this. Um, there we go. Um, so it's going to go through and print each of the cats uh, on the first line, and then it's going to give us a new line. Then it's going to just do the, the first dog, and then the third dog, which is Teddy Bear and Bodhi. And then, down at the bottom, it's just going to go through and give us each of the, the animals within the two-dimensional array. So that's... That, I think. Yep, that, that's for each. We've just done while. Oh, sorry, we, we didn't do while, so I will do while now. Um, so while loop um, is a... Well, while the condition is true, so in this particular one, while I is it, okay, so I is equal to zero. So um, the array is the numbers one through ten, um, which gives us a scalar scalar gives us how many elements are in the array. Um, so we've got I is currently equal to ten. So while I is greater than ten, we want to remove one from I and print out the number. Um, I. I think I should be able to just paste this. Um, so it's going to go through and it's going to find out that there are um, 10 numbers within the numbers array. It's going to um, say while we are greater than 0 on i, we are going to decrement it so it, it will go from 10 to 9. And then we're going to say what i currently is. A tab, backslash slash t is a tab. And then it's going to go into the array and tell us what's at the um, index for each one. 
Um, and then down here, it goes through and everything. And the reason why it doesn't stop when it's at zero for i is because it only checks the condition at the beginning of the loop. So we can change the we can change i within the loop, and it won't check it again until we get to the end of the loop and it starts to re restart the loop. Um, so that's while loops, and I believe that makes this a rather short video. Um, and go ahead and check out the second chapter exercises, and let me know if you have any problems. All right, bye.